Alright guys, we are live. How is everyone doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Damn, it's bright today. <laughs> Hang on, let me just uh, change my lighting around. There we go. There we go. How is everyone doing today, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This morning... We have an awesome, awesome, awesome game that I was checking out, I had the pleasure to check out uh, yesterday, and uh, finally got a code for it this morning. So we're going to have a quick run through of this game. It's so, it, 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 it's perfect for me. I love, I love kind of roguelike space exploration, uh, RPG style games. It's really, really, really interesting. Um, so I'm hoping we can do something with this. So, uh, how is everyone doing today? Hey there, Corsair, Chris, hey there, Overlord, Brides, D it's Danny, it's Atsumi, all of you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I think we should just change the room around. Yeah, I did, man, I changed my room around. I've done it all on stream, Chris. Um, so, yeah, let's, should we, should we get straight into the action, guys? I've never played this before. I've loaded this up and I went live. I've watched a lot about it. Uh, the developers sent me a whole massive document to read through, which I read through this morning. It looks incredible. Um, I'm currently, uh, I've been told by the devs to use a controller. So I'm using my Xbox controller with this. Uh, you can already see that there's achievements and things like this. So let's have a quick look beforehand. So you get stories, achievements, locations, artifacts, aliens, and challenges. Um, so I've also been told to play, there's two different stories. There's like an adventure story, not an adventure story. There's like an adventure challenge mode. And then there's a rogue challenge mode. And the rogue one is more, is harder. Um, so for some reason, there's no music right now. Uh, so give me two seconds. I'm, uh, I'm just going to restart the game very, very quickly, and then we're going to get into it, because I just want the music to all... Because that's the main reason. I, I love everything connected with it. So give me two secs. I'm just lo reloading it back up. Um, so how's everyone doing anyway? What's everyone been up to? And uh, we're just... Uh, I'm just getting everything ready in the back end. There we go. Allow access. There we are. Um, so... Just making sure everything can be heard. There we go. And we're jumping in right now. Uh, totally not Connor, thank you very much for the host, dude. Yo, long time no see, buddy. There we go, we can hear it now. Right. Want to see this game, so here we go. Let's, jump, let's just jump straight into the mission. Now, we've got to choose four crew members. Okay, and each crew member brings to the table something different. Uh, they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. And um, and it'll be quite interesting. So what I will need, be it on point today, thank you very much. It's very, very hot as well. I'm going to open my window very quickly. So what we will need, guys, is a little bit of input from you. Okay. I want you guys to, to kind of come with me on this adventure. All right. Um... And so we're gonna we're gonna be the the again because it's more like a roguelike RPG as well. Expect to die, you know. You're not gonna you're not gonna get through to the end first time round. But it's all about the experience, all about the different techniques you use to do it, the different factions you interact with in all of the different playthroughs, um, and the fact that there's achievements is is brilliant as well. So. Welcome to Project Dedalus, the maiden flight of humanity's first jump-capable ship. Please select four crew members who will pilot the ship to Alpha Centauri and back. Their specialized knowledge and skills will be crucial for exploring this new frontier. So, off the bat right now, we have an archaeologist, a test pilot, an engineer, a botanist, a theoretical physicist, a civilian observer, corporate executive, mission planner, researcher, and an astronaut. So we can only take four of these ten guys. Beard died to get rid of the gender? Never, man, never. <laughs> My bank holiday weekend was good, thanks, Adam. How was your bank holiday weekend, buddy? Uh, please, guys, as well, if you haven't already done so, please do like and retweet the fact we're live. It would be very, very helpful. This game is, is awesome. Um, so each one of these guys brings their own special skills. 
So for example, Archaeologist, as you can see, has Crystal Skull, bought from Siobhan's personal collection. So it has a little thing there. Uh, the Test Pilot has, gives us major land of repair. Uh, this, uh, the engineer gives us the toolbox, personal equipment for repairing devices, uh, the botanist brings uh, a pet plant, theoretical physicist brings a white pill, marked for Benoit's use only, uh, and we got an astronaut that does major hull repair, we got a critter repellent with the researcher, uh, we got a distress beacon which calls for help from the mission planner, we have a corporate executive which uh, is a salvage kit. You got to choose group, you reckon? And then we also have the Civilian Observer, which is the laptop, doing a blogging empire. So, right, what what kind of... Is this a new game or a bet? It's a brand new game. This gets released tonight, I believe, on Steam. Um, so we got to choose Groot. You reckon we'll go with Groot to start? Yeah? Okay, okay. So we could go... Well, so you want to get a botanist. Dr. Ashwin Ash Malo, uh, Malotra. Claims to have been nominated by our botanical team through the strategic use of, direct quote, my guitar and a particularly annoying tune I kept singing at, the t t at them until they surrendered. We have not dared investigate in any event Malotra's skill with terrestrial and exoplant life from Mars and Europa makes him an ideal handler of any botanical discoveries we may find on Alpha Centauri or beyond. I told my husband, the husband that the IASA was thinking of shooting me into space. Never seen him so happy. <laughs> I am good. <laughs> How you doing, Miko? Welcome to the stream, bud. Thank you very much for coming in. Could be useful for plant. I totally agree, Tatsumi. I think we'll go with that. We'll go with that. As I say, we'll probably do a load of different playthroughs. Play playthroughs. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with Gwendolyn to start. Now we need three more people before we do the ship and everything like that. So three more people. I definitely, definitely think we might need uh, an astronaut with the hull repair. Uh, maybe a test pilot for the lander repair. We maybe want... I don't know. Scavenger? We, we could get a scavenger. Yo, Timbulati! How you doing today, buddy? Welcome to the stream. I hope you're well. I didn't see you guys. You're all in blue. And I'm colorblind, so it all looks the same. Where are you, Tim? Oh, there you are. There you are. Sorry, I seized him. Thank you very much for coming in. Is this an RPG or an MMO? This is an RPG. It's like a roguelike space exploration RPG, buddy. Um, so I'm thinking maybe a major hull repair. Although we're going to be landing a lot, I reckon. Test pilot Malcolm Winters is on loan to us from the United States Air Force, assisting our engineers on lander designs. He disapproves of humanity's current quest to reach the stars, feeling that we are not yet ready to face what may be out there. Despite this, his presence is recommended for more challenging terrain or mission-critical operations. With his help, civilian training times have been reduced to just three weeks, allowing every prospective member of the mission to handle over 80% of predicted galaxy, galaxy, galactic terrain types we're opening pandora's box just being out here god i hope we can close it again uh no song request today we're gonna be listening to the to the game the whole game and nothing but the game tim it's a brand new game we want to we want to feel the whole the whole of the game uh so i want to go with the test pilot because i feel like landing on uh, I, I saw some gameplay last night and it seems that landing on planets is very very tricky sometimes um, so out of this as well, personal equipment for repairing devices, that could be quite interesting. Uh, I definitely think we might take that scavenger and maybe, maybe an astronaut. Astronaut or a researcher, guys? Astronaut or a researcher? This is the question. What, what should we go with first? What should we go with first, guys? I'm thinking... You want to go research rather than astronaut? Yeah? Okay, yeah, we can. We will go with research. Not only guys, pick Kirsten. Are you reckon? Peldon? Alright, alright, alright. We'll pick, we'll pick Peldon. We'll pick Peldon for now. We'll pick Peldon. Just, just so that we have that little bit of, uh... Little bit of change. Uh, now, guys, we get to choose our ship. Yo, thank you very much, Mike. How you doing today, buddy? 
Indiana Jane! How you doing, Acidic? Thank you very much for coming into the stream. How are you today, dude? Uh, right, okay, so now we choose our ship. Uh, I believe there's three different ships to choose from initially. Uh, please choose a ship for the Dedalia 7 mission. All have been certified for long-range exploration missions, guys. Okay, so we have the ISS Ulysses, uh, which looks like a decent all-round ship. Has some big cargo space. Uh, module controls, fuel injection systems, jump drive range, and exotic matter collector. That could be quite interesting. Uh, it also has resource processing, so the module includes converters for minerals, metals, and gases. Uh, it has a ship scanner, uh, and the module controls the planetary scanner array for detecting life forms, weather, and resources. And it's a top-of-the-line Martian technology for cheap, efficient, and asteroid mining. So this one looks like a big resource gatherer. Uh, this I don't know how important resource gathering will, will be allowed along the line, but I understand because it's a space exploration, you're going to be wanting to try and pick up as many resources as possible uh, to basically aid in your research and development and getting back home, basically. How are you doing, Melted Snow Girl? Welcome to the stream. Uh, so we've got the ISS Endurance now, which has an increase of hull strength and fuel. Um, however, it's very low with maneuverability. And it can't jump very far, but it's got a massive, massive cargo space available to it. Uh, it also Damn. collects... Damn! Yo, Tetsumi good. with a new sub hype! Guys, can we have some hype up in chat, please, for Tetsumi? Welcome to the 420 Scub Club, my friend. Guys, let's spam all the Josh Baked emotes in the, in the chat, please. Spam the Corsair sellout emotes. Come on, I want to see it all. Thank you very much, Tetsumi, for that re uh, for that new sub hype. We're now eight subs away from our goal of 50 subscribers by the end of the month. Don't mind me asking, where did you get the name Josh Baked? Uh, long story short, I used to have a clothing company called Baked Apparel. Mm. Yo, Firebirds, with the resub hype as well. Thank you very much indeed, Firebirds. For the two months in a row, dude. Welcome back to the 420 Sub Club. I hope you enjoy your time here today. Right. So the ISS Endurance looks like it's it's got more fuel, but obviously can't jump as long. Uh, it's quite hard to maneuver, so this could be quite interesting coming in and out of different systems. Um, we all know you can't. Ha, thanks, Pug. How you doing today? Yo, Skip's here as well. Uh, and then we have the ISS Discovery. Now, where this ship lacks is in its hull strength and the fuel capacity. However, it does have a massive jump range and is very, very maneuverable. But at the same time, it cannot carry half as much space as the ISS Endurance. Now, what makes this different is that it doesn't have a big exotic matter tank. It looks as though this is more of a speed one where you want to go jump, 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 collect your main things, jump, 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 collect your main things. Whereas these ones, I think, allow for more uh, for more exploration. So I'll tell you what we're probably going to do. We're going to use the ISS Ulysses initially because it seems like a middle-of-the-road kind of ship that we have available to us. It's got good cargo space. It's pretty well balanced. It will probably offer us, for a first-time playthrough of the game, uh, quite an interesting... Well, it, it enables us to do all sorts of different gear, basically. So we'll, we'll probably go with the Ulysses. Uh, also, now we, we, we can get to... Uh, we get to change the colors of the ship as well. Now, I'm colorblind. So I'm just going to go with a random one that looks quite cool. And you guys tell me if it's... Uh... I like that. What color What color are these guys? What color is this? Because um, I'm color... Yeah, if you guys want to choose, that's cool. But uh, is this purple? Is, is this good? Is this a good color? Should we should we continue? That's horrible? Okay. <laughs> okay. If that's horrible. Um, I don't know what colors are what. So I'm, I apologize for being colorblind. Blue, yellowish. It's pink. Okay. Um, what else? This one looks quite cool. That one looks cool. This is red and yellow, right? Is this red and yellow? Um, pink with yellow spots. <laughs> cool. Go back one. Okay. We're talking this one, yeah? Pink with, is this pink with yellow spots? If so, we'll, we'll go with this color ship. Should we go with this color ship? Yes. Like a proper spaceship. Okay, cool. All right, all right. We won't go, we won't go crazy. I see, I love the colors. I love all of the crazy ass colors for it. Not that I know what they are. Um, but we're going to go with this one. 
Cyan, white, and grey. Okay, cool. Alright, sweet. So we'll go with that one. Now we have our lander. So our lander attaches to the main ship when we enter uh, planetary orbits. We can then uh, use the lander to go onto the planets and uh, dig for stuff, gain resources, etc, etc, etc. So this, uh, again, we have three different. We have three different landers that, again, we can choose from. He's going to take a photo and send it to Josh. <laughs> you already love this game? Good, Tetsumi. So do I, man. I, I'm, I'm just being able to choose this. Now, because I feel so heavily invested in all of the initial stuff, I don't want to die straight away. You know what I mean? So it's going to be quite an interesting learning curve, going through the tutorial, learning how to fly and all of that. Uh, so we have the ISV Serenity. Now, it ha now there's different modules on each of them. So you get your lander engine, which manages lander control, fuel injection system, hull integrity, and pilot safety. You then have your lander drill, uh, which manages drill systems, filters, and material conversion for all known planetary types. Uh, you then have your lander probe, which controls the fuel usage and planetary gas absorption. And then you have your pilot ejector, which safeguards the lander operator in event of a critical failure. So it's pretty, uh, pretty important to have decent skills on all of these. So you, again, we're going to go, like, the ISV Serenity is very much middle of the line. It has everything you need. The Pathfinder it has a massive fuel tank, good probe efficiency, a lot of device slots, but not very good at collecting resources through its drill. And it's very, it seems quite weak. So it looks more like a, just an exploratory, exploratory, if that's the correct word, uh, vessel. So this one's good for probably zipping around and checking out whole planets. Uh, you've then got the ISV Odyssey, which which has the big hull strength. It's more like a tank. Uh, it's used to being able to get onto the ground uh, and drill into the planets and gain resources like pretty pretty well there. However, it doesn't have a lot of fuel, so it's more of a you plop on top and you orbit a planet and then you kind of just drop straight down onto one. Um, and then you got the Serenity. Uh, yeah, and then you got the Serenity, which I think we're gonna use. I think again. For our first playthrough, we're probably going to run through the middle of the line with this. Um, and now we have a seed. Uh, enter a code to generate the galaxy. So, uh, let's... Let's try something. Um, let's try baked, shall we? Let's just see what we can do. Anyone got a better a better seed? B-A-K-E... Baked. Baked O1. Let's go baked O1. <coughs> so we're going with a baked O1 seed. I don't know what that's going to do, but it might be quite interesting. Baked 41. You guys want baked 41? Yeah, new to plenty. Not bad looking. <laughs> we could. We could do baked 420 rather than baked. But no, we'll do this for now. Difficulty. So, what we've been advised by the devs in regards to this little um, uh, document that they, they sent across to me is that we change the difficulty to rogue mode rather than explorer mode. Now, the reason with this, explorer mode is a little bit more tame. There's a few key things that have been uh, taken out to reduce difficulty compared to rogue mode. Um, so, we're going we're gonna to start with rogue mode and we're going to start with learning the basics. So, we're going to start from Earth. We're going to learn how to pilot the ship and lander, launch from Earth, fuel up on Mars, and embark on humanity's first jump to Alpha Centauri. Uh, so we can do that. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, guys, let's do this. Good morning, Bruce. How you doing?